Welcome everyone to this installment of Learn Teach Agriculture. Today we're going to be focusing on feeding rations. So let's get started. Today we are looking at feeding rations. So remember feed costs are the major cost of producing beef, um, typical in all livestock operations as well. So using feed as efficiently as possible is critical to make a profit margin higher than what the costs are is really important so remember when we talked about rations we briefly mentioned it earlier on in the year so feeding rations must be properly balanced in order for producers to be profitable and in order for their animals to be healthy so again a ration is the amount of feed that an animal is going to receive within a 24-hour period and a balanced ration is really key because this is the amount of feed that will supply the proper nutrients needed for the animal in the proper proportions in order to adequately supply Support growth, lactation, maintenance, gestation, or other bodily needs. So always keeping those in mind is really important when creating a ration. Basic nutrients we talked about, again, review. Six basic nutrients are water, protein, carbohydrates, fats, minerals, and vitamins. Your nutrient composition of a feed is the amount of specific nutrients contained in that ration. It's going to vary depending on the sex of the animal, um, if the gestation, lactation, what stage of growth are they in. Um, weight and different things like that. So nutrients will be measured as the percentage of dry matter or the percent of the total weight of feed each nutrient comprises after all the water has been removed. Typically in your feeds you're always going to see the um, percentage of dry matter. This is how it's typically measured especially in like cattle operations which we're going to use as our example throughout this. Um, so dry matter is the proportion or the portion sorry of feed left after all the water has been removed other than water this is where all the nutrients of the feed can be found that's really important to remember so as fed which you may have heard or have seen before refers to the feed that includes moisture at the rate that it would when fed to cattle so under normal circumstances, dry matter intake represents an amount that can be consumed by cattle. So because the amount of dry matter in feed can vary, a ration should be balanced on a dry matter basis and then converted to an as-fed basis to account for the weight of the water content. Um, so that's kind of what that little chart there in the lower right-hand corner is showing, um, how we remove the water and then add the water back in for that as fed basis. Crude protein is another key in rations. So crude protein is determined by measuring the nitrogen content of feed and then multiplying it by this factor of 6.25. Um, so proteins typically contain 16% nitrogen. Um, however, multiplying that nitrogen content by that 6.25 is an efficient way to measure an otherwise variable component in the feeding ration. Not all nitrogen containing compounds are protein, however. We know this from our chemistry classes in biology, um, and these are what we're going to be calling non protein nitrogen, or NPN, as it's typically abbreviated. NPN is valuable because rumen microbes convert that into protein during rumination. So remember, this is only happening in our ruminant animals, such as cattle. So NPN sources are not as valuable, however as the actual protein, um, especially for cattle who need high protein needs, especially if you're trying to get them to gain a lot um, as a market animal. So true sources of protein should be used for the majority of cr crude protein in a feeding ration. DIP and UIP are two key terms as well. Um, these are getting a little more on the advanced side of animal nutrition and rations, but we're going to briefly talk about them so you know. So crude protein consists of two kinds of actual protein, DIP and UIP. DIP is degradable intake protein that can be broken down in the rumen by microbes, while UIP or undegradable intake protein will bypass the rumen and will be broken down into sm in the small intestine of the cow. This is what we also call the bypass protein because it bypasses the rumen essentially. There should be a balance between DIP and UIP or microbial growth within the rumen or lack thereof will actually cause um, a limit in the digestibility of a ration, which means that our feed's not going to be used as efficiently as it could be. TDN is another key term. It's energy 
um, is not actual nutrient, but a reflection of the calories provided by the carbohydrates, fats, and to a lesser extent, the protein and ration. So TDN, this is a key term again, remember this, total digestible nutrients. You may have seen this on some tags, we may have heard of it if you're feeding in a larger operation. Um, so it's the value most commonly used in ration balancing to determine the energy content of a feed. Remember, the whole point of feeds is to help produce energy for the animal to maintain itself or whatever life stage it is in. Fiber is also a measure of the cellulose content of a feed. When we're talking about different types of feeds, we can talk about roughages. Um, so roughages, remember, are like grasses and things like that. Fiber content is pretty high within roughages, um, but can be higher in other feeds as well. So because cattle have rumen microbes, that fiber provides energy to a ruminant ration that would not be provided by a monogastric. So fiber is important. Um, not all fibers, however, digest equally well in all ruminants. Some fiber, fibers are harder to digest than others. Some digest super quickly. It just depends on what it is. So in order for the rumen microbes of a cow to remain healthy, they have to have fiber. This aids, fiber aids in regulating rumen pH. Um, you don't want it to become too acidic. This is what causes acidosis and is very uh, bad for an animal, especially a ruminant animal. And it also stimulates saliva production. Uh, it is the saliva and not the fiber that maintains the pH level, but fiber is necessary to stimulate the production of the saliva. So keeping that in mind, um, the minimum needed for fiber in cattle rations is typically called the scratch factor. Um, so you may hear it as that if you go into more advanced animal science classes or are looking for a career in animal sciences. Minerals, we've talked about quite a bit. Um, some very important rations, they're classified as either micro macro or micro minerals. Macro, remember, are needed in larger amounts, whereas micro are needed in smaller amounts. Typically speaking, you're going to be looking at micro minerals in a parts per million or PPM um, instead of a larger quantity. Vitamins and rations are grouped as fat soluble or water soluble. If you've had chemistry, you've probably heard these terms before. You've probably even heard them in your biology class. Um, so it's an important distinction because fat soluble Vitamins are ones that are broken down in fat, while water-soluble ones are broken down in water. Um, it's also important because the cow's rumen microbes can synthesize water-soluble vitamins, such as B and C, um, meaning that they do not need to be included in a cattle ration. So you just want to make sure your vitamins are well-balanced in your ration as well. Water should always be free access. This is just kind of going over the six basic nutrients. Again, I'm going to skip through a couple of these slides pretty quick. Um, nutrient requirements, again, we've been talking about it. It's going to vary um, mainly by the needs of the animal and the conditions of its environment. So let's say we have some cattle in the winter. Their nutrient um, requirements during the winter are going to be a lot different than their nutrient requirements in the summer. And we can kind of see this. Um, even through observations of even like our pets, our nutrient requirements vary on what, how active we are, what the environment's like that, things like that. I'm going to skip over a couple more slides here. Um, nutrient tables or nutrient requirement tables are extremely useful because they tell you how much most of the products that you're going to be feeding your livestock or animals, what their nutrient contents is, um, and these are used quite often. Um, so here's an example of a requirements for beef cows during different stages of production, um, kind of what you're looking at um, in that way. Ionophores, very briefly, I'm just going to talk about them. They are a type of antimicrobial feed additive that increases the ability of a cow to acquire energy from its food. Um, so this is increasing its efficiency in the weight gain. Um, really key, lots of people will add these into feed rations as well. Um, implants are also used. These are just small pellets containing either naturally occurring or synthetic hormones and are implanted between the skin and the cartilage on the backside of an animal's ear after castration. Um, so this and steers specifically helps them re maintain like a muscular um, body form even though their testosterone levels have decreased um, from castration. So implants are another way to help with weight gain as well as feed efficiency to an extent. 
So Pearson squares, the other thing we're going to talk about today, this is a somewhat complex topic to talk about, but very, very important in all animal ration systems. So the Pearson square method is simple, it's quick, and it's an easy way to calculate the amount of feed necessary to meet a nutrient requirement of livestock and other animals. We're going to focus on a very simple one. Um, we're only going to do two instead of four or more feeds. So if you look there in that bottom right corner, um, nutrient compo composition of feed A is in the upper um, left-hand corner, while nutrient composition of feed B is in the lower. Um, and then we're just going diagonally. So think of splitting that square into uh, two triangles, essentially. Um, and we're going to be calculating that. So we're going to go through an example. Here's another close-up of it. Um, from this, we can get answers. So if we go across the triangle, we take the composition of A, subtract it from C, which is the percent of nutrient composition that we want in the diet, um, we get E. And so this helps us to figure out how much of each feed we need to feed our animals in order to meet that um, desired uh, content we want in our feet or a diet. So here's an example. Uh, if a producer were feeding a 500 pound steer with the intent uh, to have a rate of gain of about two pounds per day with a desired final weight of 1200 pounds, the nutrient requirement tables show that the animal would need about a 68% TDN to reach this goal that we've made. Um, so if we look at it, we're going to put our 68% TDN, TDN in the very center of our Pearson square. Um, if the producer was feeding a fescue and shelled corn in their ration, they would look up the TDN values for their fescue and corn and place those in the left corners of the square. So from our research, we found that fescue has a 52, while shelled corn has a value of 90. So we'll put fescue on the top, shove corn down on the bottom, on the left-hand side of the square. And then the producer would then subtract across diagonally um, the smaller of the two numbers from the larger. So in this case, we're taking um, 52 minus 68. So if we look at it, we're going to take 52 minus 68. That gives us our 16%. And then... We're going to take, um, we have 90 and 68, so we have to subtract the smaller of the two, right? We don't want negative numbers, so we take 68 minus 90, but still moving diagonally across the square, we get 22. So the producer then adds these values in the right, so we have 16 and 22, which equals 38. And by dividing each of those numbers, so 22 divided by 38, we can determine the preliminary percentage of the fescue and corn that needs to be in the ration. So this is to meet our 68% um, TDN value here in the center. That's what this is kind of helping to calculate. So 22 divided by 38 is 58% of fescue, and then 16 divided by 38 is 42%, which is what we need for corn. So remember, all the numbers should be positive, and the final percentage should always be less than 1. If you have one point whatever, that means something is wrong. So once the preliminary ration has been determined, the producer must next determine if the ration provides the required crude protein needed by the animal. Um, if it is met or exceeded by the ration, the ration is balanced and can be fed as is. If it's not met, however, um, it will need to be supplemented by additional sources of protein. Um, and so that's kind of the basics between behind the Pearson Square. This is going into a little bit more detail. You guys have access to look over this. Um, we're kind of keeping it simple. I provided you a couple examples to try out. Again, the Pearson Square is a very good element to know for, for animal sciences, especially if you're interested in studying animal sciences later on in your careers. Um, but if you have any questions, there's a couple more examples here if you want to look through those. Uh, let me know, and thank you for joining me today. Have a good day.